I'm going to do today is just to briefly go deep a little bit um, about um, the flower initiation and differ differentiation in grapes and uh, how we can control this. Um, maybe I will answer some other questions in your mind right now. Uh, but as Khan said, you know, by the end of the day, we'll have panel and maybe you can also discuss whatever is not clear. So why we need to understand this? Uh, because as you see here, um, the crop value is coming from the yield and the quality of the grapes we are growing. So the yield, including the cluster numbers, number of berries per clusters, and bud break percentage and bud fruitfulness, how many clusters you get per shoot. So we need to under, understand this, um, like four topics here, to be able to control it. You cannot control what you don't understand, right? So we're trying to understand this. For me, <coughs> if you under, understand every step from those ones, you can control it. You can get more profit from your uh, vineyard. Uh, as Matthew said, you know, that is uh, the bud we have it right now, like uh, in the winter bud. You have here the main one, the main bud, and the other two lateral buds here. Um, during the season, like within the summer, you will see the fruits on the vines. At the same time, you have the buds in here on the cane that carry the crop of the next year. So we are growing two crops at the same time. And that's what, you know, we have to keep it in mind. Because some people, they care about having a um, good number of clusters, a good crop this year, and the following year, everything goes down. So keep in mind that you are growing two crops at the same time. You take care of the, the clusters, of this year and the clusters of the following year. As Matthew said, you see here, that is a differentiation of the buds of the following year here. Um, again, that is the cluster differentiation um, correspond to the stage of the vines. Like this year, we have the bloom, the fruit set, and the variation and ripening. At the same time, you have the cluster of the following year is forming here. So basically, by variation, you have everything is done for the following year. You cannot change it. So if, if you have any culture practice or any factors that affect the buds, would be effective here from the bloom until the variation. The variation when uh, the fruits start to change the color to red or uh, get soft, like the water comes in the berries. So by that time, you have already the crop of the following year. You cannot change it. See? So we are talking about probably from March until June, July. Those three, four months determine the crop of the following year. Uh, again, as Matthew said, you know, that is a broad, bad fruitfulness. And uh, you have to be careful about uh, where those clusters on the cane. Like in some, as he said, you know, in some varieties you have those basil bud fruits, uh, fruitfulness. So we have clusters in those basil buds. When you go a little bit higher in the cane, you have more higher percentage of, of clusters. So if you cut those canes back to two buds, you lose everything for the following year. So be careful about this. Look at the variety. Uh, what is the um, fruitfulness behavior of this variety? Um, this figure here, actually, I like this one because it gave us idea about how this bud is working and how we can shift from dental heel to cluster. That is the main purpose of all of us here is to get clusters, not go vegetative on the vine. So here, it's very complicated, as you can see here. Um, like the questions, the last question uh, in the previous session about the deficit irrigation, if you have too little water giving to the vines, you have a weak canopy, and you have 
low carbohydrates in the vines, and then you shift the formation of the cluster from cluster to dentary. So here, another problem, the nitrogen. If you have too much nitrogen, you have a big canopy. Canopy can shade the buds, and shading produce GA, or gibberellic acid, which is a hormone that can cause necrosis in the, in the buds. So you lose the buds because of the shading. Uh, the water also, you know, when you add too much water, you have more canopy, shading canopy, and if you don't do the leafing, you lose the buds. So again, it's complicated here. Um, in the middle here, you can see kind of some hormones inside the buds that control the process of having clusters here in the main buds. So like the, any operation in the vineyard or any culture practice we are doing that can affect those uh, hormones, like the deficit irrigation, for example, deficit irrigation induced abscessic acid, okay, and can be bad or good uh, for, the, for the bud differentiation and the bud break after this. Higher abscessic acid can delay the bud break also. So all of these factors play together, and by the end, you will have uh, either cluster or dentarial. And also the light, as Matthew said, you know, it's a very, very important factor. So if you look at this figure here and try to correlate this with what, whatever you are doing in a vineyard, you will be able to control it. Uh, if you have less clusters number, go back and check the water, check the uh, nitrogen, check the shade. If you are doing leafing, um, shoot removal, all of these factors. Uh, basically, we have the, the main buds will have uh, the, the bigger cluster. But the, also, the other two buds here, the lateral buds, they may contain... Uh, clusters, but usually they are smaller than, your, than the, the, the big one here, the main bud. If you get cluster from those lateral buds, you get smaller clusters. So if you have smaller clusters, mean that something happened for those main bud and you are getting uh, buds from the uh, cluster from the lateral ones. So as I said, the carbohydrates, um, it's a main factor for uh, getting uh, cluster in, on, the, on the buds or not. Uh, try to have a reserve on the vines so it can form the cluster during from bloom to uh, variation. Uh, nitrogen, it's very important, but as I said, excess nitrogen can also can be uh, bad for the bud um, differentiation. Uh, be careful. Sometimes you add the nitrogen without Intention, like if you have water that has nitrogen and uh, just you are irrigating normally and you are getting low number of clusters, that's you have to check the water back and see how much nitrogen and deduce it from what, uh, whatever you are adding. Um, that's happened in one case. Uh, I got a call saying, okay, I, I just every year we're getting low number of clusters. And when we checked the water, we found high nitrogen in the water. He was using the whole water and, you know, just adding normal water. So we solved the problem by changing the emitter, just instead of having uh, one, one gallon per, uh, one gallon per, uh, per, per uh, hour uh, emitter, we changed it to half. And actually, following year, we got very high crop on the vines. So basically, it can be, the solution can be very, very, um, small, just, you know, you have to figure out what is wrong uh, in the buds. Uh, the water supply, as I said, you know, you have to be very careful about this. Andrew will talk about the water. Uh, environmental conditions, as he said, the sunlight, carbohydrates. Uh, sometimes, if you have very cold winter, can damage the buds. If you have it already and you did your job during the last summer, and you have the buds, but in the, in the winter, you get too much cold and you get damaged. Last year, we got some cases uh, in the Central Valley where 
we had frost in February 22nd to 25th last year. And the vines, they were dormant, but they were active. Like the sap was running on the vines, but you don't see any buds growing. But what happened, this frost for three days killed most of the buds on the, on the vines, especially uh, the young vines. And especially the vine that received nitrogen late on the, on the summer, so they were very active. And we had some cases uh, in the Central Valley last year about this. And that's proving, you know, you have to be very, very careful about um, those buds. But sometimes you cannot control it. Like frost or winter damage, you can't do anything. Uh, pruning, as Matthew said, you have to be very careful about the pruning. Look at the variety, what you have, um, and follow whatever they said about um, spur pruning or cane pruning. Uh, uh, the canopy management, Karen will be talking about this. Um, in some cases, uh, in table grapes, it doesn't apply for wine grapes. We use the GE, which is a plant growth regulator to increase the size and um, do fruit thinning in the grapes. And if you use too much GE, and that also can reduce the bud differentiation in the, um, in the winter buds. And you get low number of clusters. Uh, how it looks like when you have, that is the main bud here in the middle. And those are the two lateral buds here. And when you cut, if you take any cane right now and cut um, the, the buds in the middle, you will see those three buds right now here. That's one case where this lateral bud is dead. You can see it is brown here. Those are uh, good ones. The other case is here. So uh, this one is dead. The, the main bud it is dead. This one is dead. And that one, it's healthy bud here. So when you have a case like this, you have shoots growing from this bud, which is smaller than the main bud. So you expect like small shoots or stunted shoots and smaller clusters. So if you have this case, look back and see what happened for the main um, bud. Uh, the bud break, um, we are looking for a good bud break like this here, but in some cases, when we have any problem in the vineyard that affect the bud break, you will see erratic bud break like here, low percentage of bud break. You see the buds, they don't grow evenly. And they, the problem was having this. You have, um, you don't have uniform flowering. You don't have uniform cropping. And the yield will be like uh, variable, uh, like in the TSS, uh, the color, maturity stage, all of this will be uh, variable. So it's better to have like a uniform bud break like this one here. Um, that's slide from uh, the table grape. We try to increase the bud break percentage and make it uniform in, uh, in table grapes. And that is, uh, we are using in um, table grapes the hydrogen cyanamide or the Dormex. That is the commercial, that is the only commercial uh, product right now. But there's some trials about getting a new and others uh, product that can improve the bud break. If you have the cluster inside the winter bud, but they are not growing, in this case, you can use the Dormex to push the buds to grow. What the Dormex is doing is just, to, as you see, um, there's the scales around the buds. So this Dormex removing the scales and also go inside the buds and activate all the process that can uh, help in growing the shoots and the clusters. So sometimes you have the buds, and they are fine, they are good, but they don't want to grow. That's, a, that's another problem. Like, and in the spring, they don't grow. So basically, either you have, you are leaking shilling inside the buds, or there's some, um, um, some positions in the canes, they don't receive the, the same amount of uh, carbohydrates, so they don't push. So in this case, you have to use some external factor to push those buds. 
um, the clusters of grapes. We have the cluster here, the rackets, and you have the cane. Uh, that's the, the, the bit cells and laterals here. Uh, the fruits attached to the rackets, and that is the bit cell of the fruits that carry the fruits here. So that is basically the, the, the grape clusters. Uh, that's again uh, the flowering of grapes. Grapes doesn't require um, bees, as Matthew said, for pollination. Uh, they, have, they are perfect flowers. They have the female and male uh, organs. They have the, the stigma and the stamen here. And what happened in the beginning, they are closed. That is the petal closed. And they start detached from the bottom here, from the base. And by the end, they will open. Once they are open, the pollination is done. So you cannot change it. So it's not like the other fruits or flowers. They open and they start to keep waiting for the boiling grains to come. No, the boiling grains are inside. So when it's open, when you, you see the cap fall, we call it cap fall, that is already done. The pollination is done. Like here, that's at this stage, already fertilization and pollination is done. Uh, that is study, they look at the, they take the, the flowers, different stages before bloom, and they look inside the, um, the ovary here, and by zero time, when the cap fall, you can see the formation of the seeds already. So once you see this cap fall, it means everything uh, is done. So if you want to take care of the fruit set or um, having a good number of berries bear cluster, it has to be before this stage. Not waiting until you see the cap fall and say, oh, I'm going to do something to improve the fruit set. No. Always in grapes, you have to be ahead, you know, in everything. You have to think ahead. Think this year about the crop of the following year. If you want to look at the cluster size, take care of the bud this year. The same thing. Um, there is number of fruits, uh, but uh, clusters, you have to think a little bit ahead in the beginning of the season. And as you know, that goes fast. Um, soon we'll have bud break. Right after bud break, like six weeks, everything is done. You have the bloom, the shuttering, and everything is done. Uh, Having those good number of fruits or berries per clusters, um, there's some uh, literature about having a good carbohydrate level inside the vines to be able to keep those berries attached to the clusters. So when you lose those berries, you lose the crop. Imagine if you have cluster with few berries, that's it's not going to make anything for you. You need a good number, especially in wine grapes, you have... Uh, you need a good number of berries per cluster. And here you can see, when the vines goes from the start right now, like soon, we'll have the bud break, they have a higher reserve of carbohydrates here. And the vine use this reserve just to push the new growth, like uh, having shoots and the bloom and so on. And then use it during the season. And by the end of the season, again, they start to accumulate more carbohydrates because they have more leaves and mature leaves make more carbohydrates and they start again uh, um, using, accumulate more carbohydrates here. So basically you have here the bloom and the variation. Variation, as I said, just the beginning of the ripening. So at bloom here, if you don't take care of the vine and feed the vine very well, you have very depletion of the um, carbohydrates, or if you don't feed, you didn't feed the, the vines last season really good, and you don't have this high reserve of carbohydrates, you may get a uh, less number of fruits per cluster. So that is again, you have to think ahead. Think last season what I did. Um, look at the nutrition program that you are using. Um, uh, some people are talking about um, like uh, after harvest uh, nutrition, like uh, nitrogen. 
all of these make a high reserve of carbohydrates here. And when you have high reserve of carbohydrates, you have a good number of fruits that uh, per clusters. And at the same time, you have the photosynthesis here. If you have a weak cannabis this season, I mean you have a weak photosynthesis. It means that you may affect also the fruit set and get lost, less number of fruits per cluster. So basically that's what uh, we're saying and also the climate or the environment can affect this and that's out of our hand, you cannot do anything. In some area, uh, there's an optimal temperature to get a fruit set. If you have low or higher temperature, that's also can affect the fruit set or the various number per cluster. Um, the nitrogen level is, I have seen some cases where if you add nitrogen at, at bloom, when it start to bloom, you lose uh, all this uh, berries. You have too much shuttering. Uh, the deficit irrigation, if you do it during bloom, you may lose all of this. You can go in the vineyard, if you have drought at bloom stage, you can see on the ground all these berries. So you have to be very careful about this. In table grapes, we use, we don't, we don't need too much berries per clusters in table grapes. So we intentionally spray GA to reduce the number of berries per cluster. So if you do it in wine grapes or any uh, other factor that increase the GA, maybe use other product that, you know, has some traces of GA, can also reduce the number of uh, berries per cluster. The drought, as I said, the shade, um, I noticed that, you know, shaded clusters tend to have, like, less numbers of berries per clusters. And I think, again, because shading is increasing the GA and the GA reduce the berry set. So be careful about this. Um, now we go, now we have very small berries after fruit set. And now this, berries will, this small one will form the crop after this. So what happened? Uh, they start to grow rapidly here, and in the middle here, what we call it the variation, start ripening. The berries start to change from either green to red or uh, from hard to soft berries. And that we call it double sigmoid curve for fruit uh, development and ripening in grapes. Uh, this figure in here, you, you, can, you can control this one using some culture practice. You can make it go faster, you can stop it, you can uh, accelerate it here. But inside the, the vines, those are those two uh, stages controlled by what we call them hormones. The hormones, uh, those are endogenous organic compounds uh, they already exist in the vine. So it's like us exactly going from baby to child, um, youth, and then go for senescence and die. Same thing. That's controlled by hormones inside us. Uh, these stages, the two stages, controlled by hormones. And those hormones already in, in, inside uh, the, the vines. Um, those hormones very, very essential for fruit ripening and development. Uh, they are very, very specific, like uh, I said, the GA and the abscisic acid, cytokinin. Uh, we mix those plant hormones with what we call them plant growth regulators. Plant growth regulators, those are the chemical that looks like hormones, but it's synthesized. It's a commercial, those are commercial products. So there's two different things, the plant hormones and the plant growth regulators. Uh, plant hormones, we have different plant hormones. Uh, we have the auxin, cytokinin, gyprelic, abscisic, and ethylene. Uh, usually they are produced in one part of the vines and they are moving to make a function in another part of the vines. Like the auxin here, always in the meristems, in berries, but it can go to the fruits and make it bigger. Uh, cytokinin is produced in the roots. Again, it's active 
uh, in the fruits. So it's going to, uh, to the fruits. Cyprilic acid, again, meristems and imperials, and it can go the fruits and make it uh, bigger. Abscisic acid, the leaves, the stems, uh, sometimes also in the roots, and it can go up to the leaves and make uh, stomatal closure, for example. Uh, ethylene, it's more, I think, the ethylene is uh, it's different from the others because ethylene is gas. And it's produced usually um, in the fruits or any stenacin's leaves. Uh, I'll talk about this later. And th those two hormones here, they can make a difference in the second stage of the fruits, as you will see. Like here, um, this paper looked at the different hormones during the fruit ripening, fruit development and ripening. As, as you can see here, the auxin, the cytokine, and gyprelic acid, they are uh, abundant in the first stages of fruit development. Why? Because they are, those are promoting the cell division and the cell um, elongation. So the fruits, they need them in the beginning to make it, make the berries bigger. And then, suddenly, at variation here, they go down and they start accumulating other hormones, abscisic acid and ethylene. Ethylene, we call it the plant um, the ripening hormone. So as I said, these two, when we look at those hormones, we classify them under two groups. Uh, uh, gross promoters and the gross inhibitors. Gross promoters like auxin, cytokine, and gyprelic acid, and those are, in the, the berries require them in the beginning to have it bigger. So, again, correlate this to your culture practice. If you have any, um, any culture practice that can inhibit those cytokine or gyprelic or auxin, you may get smaller fruits. So if you have a smaller fruits, think about this again. Uh, like um, some people, they do the deficit irrigation very early at this stage, like the, uh, in the beginning of the development stage. And that's where you can get smaller berries because when you do the deficit, you get uh, less effective gyprelic acid. So you have less cell uh, elongation, less cell division, so you get less uh, fruit size or very, very small uh, size. Um, the abscisic acid, the insulin, that's required in the second phase of uh, fruit development, where after variation, or at variation exactly, you need uh, insulin and abscisic acid. Again, if you have shading, that's increased the gyprelic acid, also you can inhibit those things. So it's, those hormones, they are working together. Like, there is a connection. Like, everyone has a function, and other one, like, as I said, abscisic acid can inhibit the effect of gyprelic acid. Uh, I think the gyprelic can inhibit the abscisic acid. So they are required in a specific stage of fruit development. Uh, again, uh, the gyprelic acid and cytokinin increase the size, but the mechanism is different. Like here, the gyprelic acid increase the size of grapes by increasing the cell elongation. It's like blowing up the pallon. Balloon is just getting bigger because stretching the cells. That is the gyprelic acid. While the cytokinin is uh, producing more cells, like increasing the cell division. So you have more cells, you have bigger um, fruits. Uh, again, abscisic acid, if you look at the during uh, maturation, that's weeks. Um, uh, after bloom, you can see um, there's an increase here where six to eight weeks, that is the variation here, you can, this, you can see this peak of uh, abscisic acid. Uh, that is the insulin, again, at the same time. Because the fruits or the berries, they need those hormones to make um, color, make sugar, uh, lower acidity. So it starts to ripe. Um, uh, grapes, 
um, as a fruits, we call it non-climacteric fruits. Non-climacteric fruits, um, uh, it, the fruit that it doesn't need the insulin hormones for ripening uh, too much. And if you cut it from the trees or the vines, it will stop producing insulin. Uh, other fruits like tomatoes, for example, here, that's an example of the tomatoes. If you buy the, the tomatoes from the market, like uh, half green or half red like this, and you leave it in the kitchen, it will turn to red. But grapes, no. Grapes, if you cut it green, it stay green. If you cut it sour, it will stay sour because all the processes stop when you cut it from the vine. That's why we call it uh, non-climateric fruits or they don't produce insulin after um, harvest. So you have to be very careful about this. When you cut it from the vines, it's done. That is, if you have high Bricks, that's high bricks, high color, it will be high color, it's not going to change. It's not like other fruits. Uh, what is very important here, this, we looked at the ethylene during ripening of grapes. They have, they have ethylene, but it's too little here. Like, compared to the other fruits like tomatoes, see how, how high the big here and how low the big. So that is, even it's small big, but it's very important for um, ripening. Uh, so we looked at the ethylene here, and exactly when you see the red color or the softness of the berries, you have this ethylene here. So you can modify this if you spray ethylene on the grapes or the product that can release ethylene, like ethyphone or ethyl, you may get higher color at this stage. But if you do it very early, it's not going to happen anything. So you need to understand that that is the big here. Where is the variation? Where you have to treat with uh, either abscisic acid. We have the Bruton now for in the market as abscisic acid. Um, we have the estrel and the ethophone. And when you spray it here, you can increase um, the number of colored birds. Again, what happened when, 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 when we spray the insulin or the, um, the product that can release insulin inside the, uh, the cells happen a lot of stuff here, like increasing the color, increasing sugar, but also be careful if you spray too much insulin or uh, ethyphone or estrel, you may get soft berries because that's another, you cannot control it. You introduce the ethylene inside the vines and in this case, it's doing its job, including the softness. So, again, you need to look at the concentration you are using, the variety you are using, the stage you are using. All of this uh, determine exactly what you are doing. If you use it very late, you may get color, but you get soft pearl. Uh, maybe in the in wine grapes, doesn't matter too much, but in some other, like... Uh, um, table grapes, it's really uh, important. Um, just, you know, I know most of the people here are uh, wine grape growers, but he, again, um, that's a bonus. If you want to um, just have an idea about how we produce table grapes, it's completely different. Um, in table grapes, we have the bud break, and then as I said, with spray GA to reduce the number of cluster, uh, number of berries per cluster, so you have good number. And even we do manual thinning, we cut it and remove some laterals. And use spray GA or cytokinin to increase the size. And by the end, you spray acephone or acyl or bruton, like abscisic acid, to increase the color. So that is in case if anyone has table grapes. Um, as I said, um, most of the indigenous hormones, they have equivalent at a commercial level. You can buy it. Uh, Oxen, they have all these products. Uh, the cytokinin also, they have the, I think, Kimzel right now. That is a commercial name of the product. Uh, Gibralic acid, they have the Progeb. Abscisic acid, you have the Bruton. For ethylene, you have the uh, for ethylene you have the acephone and the acyl. Those are the same ones. 
So basically, we have it um, available at commercial level. Um, the third, the Jupilic, we use it for cluster elongation, very thinning, very sizing, cytokinin for very sizing, abscessic and ethylene for uh, coloration. And um, I think that is uh, all what I think I uh, need to say today. And if you have any questions. Questions? Um, if there is any correlation between the abscessic acid or the ABA and the carbohydrates, um, I think there is somehow correlation, but I'm not sure for sure how 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 it's working. But I assume that you know, uh, with with increasing the abscessic acid inside the vines, you start to accumulate more carbohydrates, like uh, by the end of the season. Yeah, by the end of the season. Yeah. Yeah, that is uh, <laughs> that's uh, that's a big challenge. I think uh, Larry, I think uh, will cover something about uh, this. Uh, the Met Damia did that work at uh, Ohio State to uh, increase that. Their uh, goal was to uh, improve uh, whole pines of the uh, primary bud. So in doing that, uh, they were uh, applying uh, epsilic acid or its uh, uh, homologue uh, uh, prior to uh, initiation of uh, ectodorms. Uh, but uh, when they did that, uh, they were seeing uh, uh, an increase in uh, polysaccharides and uh, oligosaccharides uh, in the uh, cortex. It wasn't necessarily like, increasing uh, starch per se in the uh, cortex. So uh, the uh, types of uh, sugars were uh, becoming uh, more complex around the uh, bracts. Benny, if you want to do that, just why you don't take care of the nutrition program during the season, and even adding... Um, after harvest nitrogen, that's also increase the reserve of the carbohydrate because you move everything to the to the vines. So yeah, I think uh, best way just to go for nitrogen. Other questions? You can you can take uh, I think George will show something about the dissection. You can just take some buds, so just cut it. it yeah, you, you can. It it yeah, you can look at it, and if it's brownish or has brown, uh, not very uh, green, so you you expect to get uh, some bud damage. Yeah. Okay. But again, it depends on the variety. Okay. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> I'm from the Central Valley. <laughs> And I think uh, right now we still Thompson is not active. That happens when it did happen last year when we have like uh, in the south, like um, close to Wasco area, where it's warmer early. Like right, right now, different temperature between here and there. It's there's a difference. So when you have early variety, and also in a warmer area, and you get sudden um, drop in the temperature, that's where everything collapses. Because when they have warmer weather, the sap starts to move in, inside the vines and start to be active a little bit. And when you drop the temperature, that's killed the vine. But right now, I think Thompson in the north here is dormant. Once it's, when, once it's dormant, it's dormant. Like you don't, I think you need lower temperature to kill the bugs. Yeah. Other questions? 
Okay. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, that's what I warned about this. <laughs> I mean, so there's no getting around it. If you use that no, if you use it in the right concentration, right stage, I think the right variety, you'll be able to get a good uh, result. Y you have to, you know, try different uh, differences. Using it, uh, we had a, a young vineyard of Cabernet that you couldn't get to color up, and we ended up using mylar in the floors of the vineyard to get more light into it, which worked. But I was wondering if this was an alternative. Uh, but give it a try. I mean, uh, but you need to usually for the phone we spray it in the beginning after right after variation. Like don't spray it before variation because you affect the cell size. After variation, when you see the color, you start spraying this. Yeah, I uh, think I used it on Cabernet in France. Um, yeah, it was around twenty percent color, and I got a good results. Uh, they are regulated, they are best, best sites, like they are under best site uh, categories. So whenever you do, you buy them, you need uh, exactly like any other best site. When you handle them, you spray them, you follow regulation of the best site. Uh, they are not restricted materials, but the, like I think it's warning or danger, the label. It depends on, on the product, yeah. Yeah. Good? Thank you.